Fuerteventura is a rather barren volcanic island. There is sea, sand and rocks, but not much else around until you start to watch out for wildlife. It was not surprising to see seagulls, because as scavengers they will make the best of any environment. This is the yellow-legged species, as found in the Mediterranean region and in North Africa. Rather more surprising was to see a pair of little egrets on the same beach, presumably stopping off on their winter migration from Europe down to South Africa. The birds I liked best though were the sanderlings. They too are long distance commuters since their summer breeding grounds are up in the high Arctic. Truly an amazing distance that they travel each year, considering the tiny size of the bird. They are commonly found on sandy beaches, scuttling back and forth with the ebb and flow of the waves. Their movement can be likened to that of a clockwork toy. Sometimes they go so fast that they seem to have three legs. Other times they are happy to stand on just one leg and even hop around on that leg. They also seem to be able to move in a crab-wise direction. It was fascinating to watch their synchronised movements running along the tide line, following the receding waves and then darting back up the beach as the next wave threatened to overtake them. I could have watched them for hours and in fact probably did. A feature of the Atlantic coast is the range of the tides, and when it goes out it can leave lagoons behind sandbars, trapping unwary sea life. Here an octopus is trying to use a rock to shelter from both the sun and inquisitive tourists. The Haria, or Atlantic lizard, is very much at home on Fuerteventura, being happy in dry and arid areas, sand dunes and lava flows. My old favourites on the island are the Barbary ground squirrels. They have become quite tame in tourist areas, being happy to scrounge for whatever titbits are on offer. This first sequence shows them playing around in a high retaining wall just below my hotel. Certainly good for a game of hide and seek. When being fed, they will sometimes adopt a smash and grab approach, stuffing as much as they can into their mouths before shooting off to eat it or to hide it away. Other times they will nibble away on the spot, balancing neatly upright 
with the help of their long, bushy tails. They are not averse to doing an Oliver Twist and begging for more. There was definitely a hierarchy when it came to feeding rights, and if the one feeding did not follow the rules, they simply got jumped on. There were other times, though, when two or three would happily feed together, and I had to suspect that they must have been members of the same family. I initially saw them on the beaches of the Chandia Peninsula, in the south of the island, but later I found them high up on the mountains of the north, on the rim of a huge volcano, proving how adaptable they are, and again how good at scrounging. I did not have to travel far to see this grasshopper, since he was resting on the tiled balcony just outside my bedroom. I thought at first that he was asleep because he let me approach so closely, but then, when he started to move a little, I feared that he may have somehow injured his rear right leg.
Goats are found both in the wild and on farms, where their milk is used to create the various Fuerteventura cheeses and, of course, to provide kid meat. There are considered to be more goats on Fuerteventura than people. They come in all different colours, including the piebald ones. They certainly seem well suited to the rugged terrain and leave no stone unturned when it comes to finding morsels to eat. They can also get their minerals by licking the rocks. At one time, the capital of the island was named Puerto Cabras, Harbour of the Goats. But when trying to attract cruise liners to Fuerteventura, the name was quickly changed to the somewhat more attractive sounding Puerto Rosario. The goat is still an emblem for the island and a brand name for shops selling all kinds of souvenirs. Like the squirrels, they are adaptable and can survive in the vast sand dunes of the north just as well as the rocky cliffs in the south. Life is certainly easier for them on a farm when the food is served up to them. This last scene is a bit of a curiosity. The little piece of floating seaweed is a clue, but a close-up reveals that the design is being created by sea snails ploughing their way through a thin layer of sand coating some of the seashore rocks.